Throughout the season, I've been testing different tires. They're all Team Powers tires because a particular track where I was uh, running these uh, uses Team Power tires. That's the only reason why. Uh, although it might be possible to run a different set of tires, I have no idea. Uh, I haven't bothered asking, to be honest. Uh, but probably not. Everybody tends to use Team Powers. But I don't see why not, considering they're all different. Uh, now, to be honest, manufacturers... I don't think there's that many manufacturers. It's probably, they're probably all manufactured in the same place, just different companies ask for different specs, which is normal. Uh, if you think of video games, for example, uh, they're all probably manufactured in the same place. Uh, if you look at certain optics, uh, there's probably just two major companies that make the actual lenses, uh, and then different companies will put different coatings on them, uh, you know, to avoid glare, things like that. But anyway, moving on. Uh, so the point is, these are SUs. No, sorry. The, this is a SX and this is an SU. They both use the same wheel uh, versus these R's. Uh, these use a different wheel. So you can tell by the team pairs versus this. Uh, now, I, I no longer label them where they are. And I'm going to talk about why in a bit. Now, this originally in the package, this said it was a 30R. The interesting thing about it being a 30R is if you look at the spec sheets, there is no 30. There's a 26, 28, 32, 36, and a 40. So I have no idea why this was labeled a 30, but usually I would mark whatever I was running. Uh, so this was a 30 and this was a 28. Uh, so go figure. Now, tires, there is no industry standard that I'm aware of as far as numbering. So everything varies like you wouldn't believe. So for example, if we went into the R, uh, 24R, uh, low end temperature, we're looking at negative 10 C to 14 Fahrenheit. Well, that's the equivalent, uh, all the way up to 22 C or 72 Fahrenheit. So these would be your cold weather tire. A compound uh, will probably be, more than likely will be much softer. So if you were to run these in hot weather, you're probably gonna destroy them. Uh, although to be honest, it doesn't really matter because if they're an R, you're probably gonna destroy them. And I'm going to talk a little about the my experience with the R, the SU and the SX. Um, but uh, I mean, you can always pause and look at the temperature for these. So these are the operating temperatures. Uh, but one of the things, if we look at the number, for example, 32SU goes from 18C to 38C. So this is uh, Celsius. Uh, if we look at the 32R, these go from 5 to 45. Completely different temperature ratings. So if we compare this to the closest thing, yeah, it's pretty much the closest thing. There's nothing else that is closer, even this. Th this one's somewhere in the middle. This is somewhere in between. Uh, temperature range is much smaller than these, which to be honest, that's probably why they're better tires because they're more specific or the, the window operating window is smaller. But if we look at, for example, say 38, there is no 38. And one might assume that they're right between the 36R and the 40R. But as far as temperature, peak temperature is about the same. That's extremely hot. I mean, tires do warm up. They do get hot uh, after a race, but not that hot. Well, maybe as a running, you know, as they're uh, scrubbing, maybe, maybe they do reach those temperatures. That's a possibility. Uh, but if you look at the low end, they're very, very close. So this 36 is actually closer to that 40 versus this 36. Uh, see, the operating temperature is much higher, but it's lower than this, although the starting temperature is probably closer. So there's no correlation with the number really, once you go outside of families, even within the same brand. Uh, now, uh, I'm gonna talk about the R, SU, and SX. 
first, uh, I am going to cut these and open them up. Uh, just, I'm curious to see what foams are in them uh, because I'm thinking a difference between these two, the SX and the SU might be the foam. And these are both 32s. This was a 30, but I'm thinking it might be a 32. It's probably just the packaging is wrong. Uh, and this one is totally different. So I'm curious, these are different numbers uh, and they did wear out differently. So I'm wondering if there's a difference in the foam other than the, the actual rubber compound. Now, before I cut them up, a uh, quick little thing. Uh, the experience with the R's. The R's, these are weird to tires. And what I mean by weird tires is, uh, now the operating temperature, uh, the operating range uh, that I would generally run these. Uh, let's see, uh, that was a very cold run, but say most of the time, right, most of the time, is probably running these, uh, let's see, uh, not that hot, to be honest, it was, uh, let's see, so it would be probably about 21 degrees Celsius, 7 degrees Fahrenheit, up to maybe 30 degrees Celsius, 86, so if I look for something between uh, 21 and 30 on the C, so that one should work, which is 28, so these ones should work, uh, and the 32s should definitely work, these right here, which are, these were labeled as 30, so I'm definitely usually using these 36s, these are worthless for this temperature range, uh, they're too hard, they slip a lot, uh, you're going to have to prep them quite well, uh, but still, the, even within that temperature range, which is their temperature range, these would generally go from not broken in, not broken in, to broken in immediately and then useless. Uh, so these are definitely, I don't know, it's strange to break these in, but once they do, that's it, they're done, uh, which isn't a big deal, the problem is... Yeah, I'm not sure when they break in. Uh, that is very strange. But within that same temperature range, uh, the SUs, these were amazing tires. Now, one of the things that I learned about tires is uh, something like this, within that temperature range that I just mentioned, uh, the best performance out of the tire was actually running one qualifier with them. So one five-minute qualifier. Now this is all on asphalt, so I, I'm not sure how these would uh, handle on carpet. Maybe these would be better on carpet, I have no idea. Uh, I wish we had a carpet track here. Uh, but this is all on asphalt, so keep that in mind. Uh, but these tires here, uh, they would be broken in after a five minute race. So qualifier two, these things were fast as could be. And then if you did a third race, they would be pretty good. But then after that, they would just taper off. Uh, so this is something that you could get a very reliable second race, uh, actually an, an awesome second race, and a very reliable third race. Uh, the third race, I would say, is better than the first when you're breaking them in. So the SUs, to be honest, are my preferred tire out of all of these Team Powers ones. I don't have an M with me, but the M, yeah, you can kind of toss those as well. SU, I think, are better. Now, that's just my opinion. Somebody else under different conditions might prefer one of the other ones. I'm just giving you a sort of an operating range that I tended to use them. Now, the SX, I'm not sure. These sort of, they don't break in as well as the SUs. So the SX, they're all right. I would go with the SUs. SUs, I think, are the better tire. Uh, now, with these R, R versions, these 28s, it was somewhat strange. They sort of had grip at the same time after a while. It just felt like the tires would sort of slide or drift a little. Uh, and that was my experience with them. I'm not sure if anybody else has had that experience, but maybe. Uh, that was one of the things that I'm mentioning. They, they would take a while to break in. And then once they were broken in, it was sort of a short period of time. And then they would sort of start sliding again. Uh, but, uh, that being said, uh, one of the important things, again, that I mentioned is tires, you sort of have to pay to win. Now, I'm not using that blade, I'm going to use a new one to open these up. Uh, and what I mean by pay to win is, 
you're pretty much going to be buying a brand new set of these tires every single time within that operating range. If the operating range drops and it gets colder, uh, then uh, it's going to take a little longer to break these in. And you could possibly use them for two races. Sorry, two race days. So maybe you can get six races out of them. I mean, I doubt it, to be honest. But uh, definitely new tires. For me, that was that was the way to go. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just cut these up. And I'm just going to cut them up because these I'm just going to throw away. So I don't really care, even if I go through the foam. Uh, but here we go. And this is the reason why I chose to use a new blade. I'm trying to avoid cutting myself. Don't do this at home. I'm what you called a self-proclaimed professional. I'm joking. I mean, I'm joking about the professional part. I'm not kidding about don't do this. I and mean, be very, very careful. Uh, let's see. I'm almost better off using scissors, probably. Yep. I want to be grabbing my snips. There we go. Or if I had that cuticle uh, trimmer, that would have been awesome. Well, let me go ahead and grab those scissors. I'll try these. Now these are belted tires, so that's one of the reasons why I was having that hard time. All right, so these are green foams. That's cool. Let's see. Oh, cool. All right, well, let's see what this one has. Go. And like I said, these are all belted. You you might even be able to hear the the uh, scissors cutting through the belt. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but uh, that's the belt right there. Right in there. All right. Oh, these are green as well. All right, so foams, uh, usually foams, they come in different densities. Many times you can tell by color, so it'll be a black foam. Uh, I think they make blue, red, green. They used to make yellow. I'm not sure if that's still around. I could be mistaken. Uh, if you have insight, just please put it in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Uh, and the reason why is these are all pre-glued, so we don't deal with uh, foams. But generally, uh, if you're desperate for traction, you want a softer foam. Softer foams are the way to go. If you have too much traction, you probably want to go with a harder foam. So the foam that you would use generally, say, for a high-traction carpet, maybe black carpet, is going to be very different than your foam selection for, say, asphalt. Now, asphalt is interesting. The reason why I say that is during a hot day, you know, tires tend to adhere quite well. But the interesting thing is whenever it gets sprayed, you know, a lot of places will spray it with uh, some type of sugary substance, uh, for example, Shasta. Uh, the fizzy drink. Why? Because it's very, very inexpensive. There's also that snow cone sugar that is used. I think Shasta is a better option. Root beer is a great option, but the other stuff is less expensive. Uh, the thing is that on a hot day, it works in the beginning, but then as the day progresses, uh, it starts coming off the pavement. So by the final race, the surface is actually a little more slippery because you get all the granules from the sugar just sitting on top, not to mention the dust and everything else. The interesting thing is on cold days, when you spray, 
in the beginning, because it's so cold, it won't dry. So it's really slippery. But then the sugar later in the day will get really, really tacky. And the biggest problem with that is it gets so tacky, it gets on your tires. So once you finish a race, you definitely need to clean all of that stuff off uh, or else it's just going to form like little granules. Imagine you're driving on sand you know, as if there, there were sand on the asphalt. So you really have to clean them, but the surface will actually be very, very tacky. So you actually get a decent amount of grip from the surface. The problem is it will start sticking to the tires and because it's cold, it'll just stick to the tires and it'll be like driving like sand. So asphalt is a very interesting surface, I would say. Uh, hmm, that's interesting. This is taking a little longer. All right, and here we go. So as far as the foam it goes, uh, all of these use the same foam. So it difference has to be the has to be the rubber. Oh, there. You can see where the uh, belts come together. That's where the belts come together. I mean, it's, it's really just a fabric that is glued on, and that's what keeps it from uh, ballooning. And this is really what you should be running if you're competing. It keeps the tire from deforming a lot. Uh, so again, uh, if you're if you really want to go wild and crazy, if you're running on a lower traction surface, I mean, you can always replace the foam and just put a softer foam. Now, you might say, it's like, what if I run it without the foam? Uh, you're probably going to get a, a really good amount of traction. The only thing is that sometimes with really light foams or no foams, I mean, even with this stuff, sometimes you will start noticing that the tire will... Well, you're not going to see it, and you're probably not going to notice it when you're driving. I mean, that would be silly, unless you have Hawkeyes. Uh, but the tire sort of folds into itself, and that creates problem. And then many times you start getting a little uneven wear mark, where it wears more toward one side, especially depending on your, what am I thinking, camber. Well, I have a bunch of those tires and you can't really tell. But anyway, you'll get this line, this line that wears out more. It's usually because the tire is sort of folding into itself uh, <clears throat> right, as it moves. And then you start wearing that little bit a little more as you turn. I just realized I was off camera. So... That's something to keep in mind. So if you start noticing some really uneven wear, I mean, maybe it's fine if you're just swapping out the tires. If you want them to run a very long time, you may have to change the foam insert. Now, foams can vary within brands. So for example, Tamiya, green is medium, uh, much more medium is red. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Closed cell is the way to go. Open cell deteriorates really fast. So in summary, the numbers are meaningless uh, across compounds because the numbers are going to mean something within the compound. So it's going to mean something if it's the R compound, for example, uh, if it's the SU compound, if it's the SX compound. Uh, but if it's outside of the compounds, it doesn't matter. It has to be in the compound. Uh, so if it's 28, 30, 32, for example, whatever compound it is, if it's outside of the family, there's not a one-to-one, -one, and it's not going to match any other brands. Uh, if you're doing competition, look to see what the track is using. Some tracks require a certain brand. You're just going to end up using those. Uh, if you're curious what tires to use, uh, go talk to the fast guys. Uh, see what they recommend, and they're generally going to lie to you so that, that you lose. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're, they're really cool. Some of those guys are really, really cool. Uh, they'll tell you uh, what to get. Uh, but again... Uh, I want to emphasize uh, this is 
a year of testing on asphalt, uh, different tires within the same brand, only Team Powers tires. Long, long ago, I ran sweeps, but I wasn't really into making these videos, so I have no information. Uh, right, so brands are going to vary, they're, even though they're probably all manufactured in the same place, so keep that in mind. If you're just bashing, I mean, these 32 SUs, you can run them for a very long time. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,